Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name's Christina and in this week's video we'll continue from where Omar John left off last week where he sketched out some Lovecraftian horror inspired characters before finalizing a design and doing some texture callouts. In this video I'll be taking that very concept and creating a base mesh in Blender using various tools such as sculpting, the skin modifier to create the fingers, tentacles and arms, and using the screw modifier to create horns and also booleans or booleans, I have no idea how to pronounce that, to cut out shapes in our sculpt. Let's get started! I was beyond excited to start this sculpt as I had just recently finished my 31 day sculpting challenge. Here is a preview of all the sculpts that I did. So some weeks I focused on anatomy, some other weeks I focused on more structural stuff and then insects and so on. I plan to make a video on that whole entire process so that will be coming out later this month. I learned a lot of different workflows, tricks, and got way more comfortable working in blenders, so I was very excited to tackle somewhat of a bigger project. By the way, if anyone's wondering, Pyramus is Latin for pyramid, which is the title of the video. I know it's a bit on the nose. <laughs> So starting off, I of course set up my reference planes as per usual and started blocking in the basic shapes, making sure to look at the sculpt from all angles in order to get the overall proportions right. Just remember in the beginning you need to think about the big overall shapes. I know it's tempting to jump into the fun stuff as soon as possible, but just be patient. Sculpting I find is very similar to drawing actually. Unless you're a god amongst men like Kim Jong-ji, whose brain works like a freaking printer, blocking out the rough shapes in the beginning instead of jumping into detailing right away will save you so much hassle in the long run, trust me. Especially when dealing with more complex structures like human or animal anatomy. Or even a city environment where dealing with perspective can be pretty intimidating. By breaking things into step-by-step -step tasks, a piece might seem a bit more manageable that way. So for this particular sculpt, this is how I approach the base mesh. 1. Using primitives to block out the basic overall shapes. And for this, I usually like to use a cube in combination with the subdivision modifier, which was the case for the torso and the head. I like to keep things as symmetrical as possible during the base mesh blockout phase. When you're in Blender, if you press Shift A, you'll get a menu with primitives and I often just use the cube for this. If you go to the modifier panel on the right, you can add in a subdivision modifier which will try to smooth out all the edges of the mesh. Pro tip, don't move the cube around while in object mode. If you tap into edit mode and move the cube around, you'll be able to retain the origin in the middle of the scene and this will make it much easier to add in a mirror modifier without things going completely haywire. So let's do just that. I add in a mirror modifier and look what happens when I move the cube sideways. It's magic, wow! And in the modifier panel, you can choose to mirror the cube in either the Y, Z or X axis. If you press this little icon, the vertices will stick to the model instead of the original cube and in most cases this is easier to edit. Another pro tip, you can add in more edge loops to allow yourself more freedom when shaping the base mesh, but don't add in too many unnecessarily because that will just make things messy and way harder to edit. The more low poly the mesh is in the beginning, the more freedom you have to edit the overall shape. If you add in an edge loop close to another edge, it will create a sharper cut or angle. This is especially good for more hard surface stuff. Or in my case, since I wanted the bottom of the torso to be cut off cleanly, I added in an edge loop at the very bottom. You can also enable proportional editing by clicking this little icon. By scrolling up or down, you change the radius of the effect. So if I hit G to move or S to scale, you can see the other vertices actually getting affected. Going back to the model, using the techniques mentioned, I started blocking out the torso. Two. 
two, using the skin modifier to block out limbs, fingers, and tentacles. I've shown this method in a previous video where I actually use the modifier to block out almost the entire body, but I'll go over this again quickly. Add in a plane, hit tab to go into edit mode. Next, press M to merge the vertices in the middle. In the modifier tab, add a skin modifier. If you're working with hard surface stuff, you can start extruding, pressing E and moving the points around. But if you're working with more organic stuff, throw a subdivision modifier in and you'll get a rounder shape, which you can then manipulate the exact same way. Press E to keep extruding and press Ctrl A to size the individual points. If you want to see through the model in order to make the vertices easier to edit, press Alt C. You can delete vertices, but if parts of it disappear, you can either connect two vertices with F or choose a new root. I did this for the arm where I created the upper arm first and then chose to duplicate a vertex with Shift D and then made that a root by pressing mark root in the modifier window. I basically used the skin modifier method to also make the fingers and the tentacle. So you can see that process here. Three, using the screw modifier for the horns. <sighs> okay, I have to admit this part broke me a bit. <laughs> due to the screw modifier being a bit unpredictable and due to me being somewhat of a dunce, I took ages figuring out the horns. I could not for the life of me figure out in my brain how the horns work due to them being fractured and a bit detached. My brain was just not computing the very basic shapes of the horns, so I had to ask Omerjan to kind of clarify the shape, which did help out quite a bit. I ended up using a cube, which I twisted with the screw modifier. Then I added in a lattice, which you can do through Shift A, and made sure this wrapped nicely around my entire horn model. Then, when adding a lattice modifier to the horns and choosing the lattice we just created, I could tweak the overall shape and the horns in edit mode. 4. Using booleans to cut out shapes. So continuing with the horn, you can probably see that what Omerjan has done is almost cut a cylindrical shape into the horn, which gives it a really nice shape. And for the fracture bits, I also added in a boolean to create that breaking effect. Booleans are honestly so simple to use and I love using them for a lot of my sculpts. Let's jump to the sphere for a second. I've made sure the sphere is subdivided and I merged the modifier. Next, add in a cube with Shift A, move it out and make it smaller. Move it so that it is intersecting with the sphere and you can do two things now. For an instant cutout, install the bool tool add-on in the add-on panel in preferences Choose your cube, then sphere with shift. Go to object or use the shortcut control shift B and choose difference. You can also combine shapes with the union if you want. If you want to keep the boolean editable, which is usually what I like to do, choose the sphere and go to the modifier panel. Add in a boolean and with the eyedropper tool or drop down menu, choose the cube. Choose the cube and in the properties window, set the display as bounds under viewport display. Now, if you move or size the cube up or down, magic will happen. I used booleans to cut out the arms, armpits and horns. When I used the screw modifier, I got some pretty broken geometry, which was my own fault to be honest. So to fix that, I remeshed the mesh in sculpt mode using the remesh tab on the top right and just clean the horn up before reapplying the boolean for a cleaner cut. Pro tip, if you get lots of holes when remeshing, either your remesh number is set too low or you have holes in your mesh. To fix this, install the 3D Print Toolbox add-on, which ships with Blender, and in the panel to the right you can see 3D Print. If you can't see this menu, press N. Perform a check by pressing Solid, which will calculate any holes or bad edges. 
if there are some, press make manifold under cleanup and hopefully this will fix your mesh. I use this add-on all the time. 5. Applying modifiers, remeshing and or detail flood filling meshes. Once I feel I had the basic forms down, I tend to merge all of the modifiers down except for the mirror modifier if I have one on and either start sculpting right away with Dynatopo turned on, increasing the resolution as I get more of the overall landmarks nailed down, or I might just remesh the entire mesh to get cleaner topology and a cleaner mesh overall. This is all down to personal preference, so there is no right and wrong here. So I advise any beginners to just try different techniques and see what works best for you. Pro tip. Detail flood fill under Dynetopo just adds the same resolution to the entire mesh, but this might be a bit too heavy on less powerful computers. So if you have a PC that struggles with very heavy meshes, starting out with low resolution everywhere and only increasing in the areas where it's needed is usually the best workflow. This is honestly the workflow I go for most of the time. So that's pretty much my workflow and techniques in a nutshell. I'll jump back to the sculpt and explain my mindset for sculpting this character in particular. So what was a bit of a bummer was the fact that Omerjan didn't draw the character in a straight orthographic view, or well, the side view was, but the front and back view wasn't. So I had to use my imagination and figure out the actual width, height and volume of certain things like the torso for example. The arms and head was easier to work with, but due to the torso being slanted in the front and back view, I had to improvise a lot. Being fairly new to sculpting, I am a bit intimidated by the whole go for your gut feeling thing. <laughs> this is also present when I'm working in illustration actually. Omrijan actually at some point said, don't overthink it, just have fun with it. And my brain was basically just like, what is this concept? Fun does not compute. <laughs> Art for me has always been a more straightforward task. I almost never create a piece just for fun or to see what I come up with. I usually always have an idea in mind or a purpose behind each piece and I have certain steps in place to execute that piece. I feel like a freaking robot admitting this. So my biggest goal for this year is actually to kind of break out of that mindset. And since I find sculpting to be such a freeing and very visual and physical experience, I feel sculpting will help me break out of that way of thinking. So I did follow Omarjan's example of just breaking away from the reference a bit and just try to have fun with the concept. He made a very good point of this character being more of an otherworldly being, which kind of allows me to be more creative and less tied down in terms of like character design. Before he said this, I was dead set on getting the lower torso to look as anatomically correct as possible but I settled on something a bit more vague and fun, like how veins or tree roots kind of like wrap around things. So our idea was to have these roots kind of wrap around the form, creating an asymmetrical type of design. And in my new reference board, you can see the type of idea behind this thinking. This is of course detail work and I will only be focusing on the general gist of the character for this video. I've pretty much touched upon all the important workflows and techniques for this base mesh, so for the remainder of the video, I'll finally shut up and let the music play during the time lapse. <laughs> if you want to skip to the final presentation, jump to this timestamp.
And here is the final presentation for the base mesh. I wanted the pyramid in the middle to glow and for this character to have a sort of dead, fleshy, organic alien type skin. In the next video, I'll be fully detailing the character, adding in lots of textures, painting in the different materials, rigging and posing the tentacles and fingers, and so on. This is where Omerjohn's texture callout sheet will come in very handy. I hope you learned a lot, or at least something, from this video. We touched on a lot of techniques and also more personal subjects. I'm trying to move away from the just sped up time lapse footage, so hopefully you enjoy this type of format. I certainly do. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If anything in the video is unclear, please let me know. <laughs> Bye!